Hello, everyone. Today, I'm joined by a special guest. His name is uh, Connor. He's also known as Vincent Vanguard on Instagram. Uh, ben and... Vanguard. Oh, uh, my bad. Vinland yeah. Vanguard. <laughs> yeah, Vinland Vanguard on Instagram. And, um, you know, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing excellent, man. Doing real good. Thanks for having me on. Really appreciate yeah, no this, problem. man. Yeah, no problem. You know, honestly, one of the good things I like about your page is that a lot of the quotes that you have on there are very um, unique. You know? mm -hmm. And it's like, it's like on other pages that I've seen, like it's a lot of it is just regurgitated quotes, which is not bad, right? But it's kind of nice to see someone have a, just like a unique perspective on things. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, man. Um, yeah, you know, the, a lot of the, the quotes that I get are just from either like material that I'm reading. Um, I follow a lot of other pages that, that post some pretty phenomenal quotes that I also find unique. And uh, I'll, I'll always type, try to like cite those pages so people can go and find them as well. And then a lot too is just my own self-reflection. So there's, there's a lot of quotes that come from me directly um, that are inspired by the content that I'm reading or, you know, just kind of just reflecting um, on just ideas in general. And uh, so I'll just jot it down in notes. And then when I get a chance, I'll, I'll uh, write the quote down. And then the, from the description, it's just expanded thoughts my own expanded thoughts upon the quote, whether from my own quote, from something I read, or for somebody else. Okay, it's nice to hear. Yeah, because I see that like almost for every like quote that you post, there's like a paragraph, of, like of like I guess like breaking it down. Mm -hmm. And it it'll either be a uh, you know a, a breakdown of that quote, right? Or it'll be just uh, a kind of a side thought that was inspired by the quote itself. So uh, you know sometimes people mention that that the description may not reflect entirely the content spoken of in the quote but it's just like that's just my own thoughts running off of that quote okay, okay. So, out of like all the quotes that you posted which one would you say that personally sticks out to you oh man it's a great question man um you know the uh kind of just like the the main theme of my page is really what uh kind of sticks the most with me and it, it's it's because like the, it's, it's the main quote that comes from myself that um, I have on, on the front cover of my page. And like this, this is kind of the focus that I always have my page around. And so it's master the self to strengthen the tribe, to enrich the vogue and bring pride to the ancestors, right? And so it's like, that's kind of the whole mission of the page is you work on yourself, right? It, you master yourself. And in turn, by mastering yourself, you, it's a ripple effect to improve the world, right? And so your tribe is your the immediate people around you that you know a lot of a tribe means a lot of different things for a lot of different people it could mean your actual fam familial tribe it could mean your friend's tribe it could mean just the you know the community you're in the church you're in that you know whatever right just like your immediate circle and then the next one is the is the vogue and it's like I, i'm of german descent so i like to use german words every now and then okay. and uh, <laughs> people get all crazy about me using german sometimes but it's just like that's just my ancestry right so I've had uh, uh, I, this one quote, not to get off on a tangent, but um, it was, uh, you know, it, it had Vogue in the description and it, it just freaked Instagram out having that V in there. And it was one of my uh, posts that got banned, you know, and it's really? just, Wait, so it had the word Vogue in there? It literally had Vogue, which means folk. It's just people, right? And oh, no. you know, I, I understand like why there's like this, this freak out about it, you know, because of Germany in the 20th century, but it's like, no, that's a German word. You know, you, you can't demonize a whole people, you know, you know that's yeah. our, our word, right? And so it's like, to me, it's like that word is, is used as a nod of my own ancestry. And so that's why I've got it in there. But it's like, it's, it's your people, right? So it's, it, it expands from your tribe to your vogue, your people. And then from there, it uh, brings pride to the ancestors. Because, you know, ancestors are also really important to me. And they, your ancestors, my ancestors, they have sweat, they have bled, they have sacrifice to make sure that you have your existence, your future today, right? And so it's like that ripple effect is what my main page is, is, is about. It's about focusing on yourself, improving yourself, and in turn, you're improving your world around you. Okay. Honestly, that's kind of interesting because I didn't know about the bulk thing that you mentioned. <laughs> like the first time I'm hearing it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I can I can send you. I, I rewrote the because uh, it was a really cool uh, quote, and the description from it, you know, it was pretty awesome. 
And to get it to stay on Instagram, I just changed the V to an F. So it's on there still. Oh, right. And uh, in, in my Instagram page, I, I have a, um, like a, a, like a story post focus. I forget what the Instagram calls it, but it's the little circles underneath your thing. And one of them is called band archives. And yeah. it's just posts that I've had that Instagram took down for whatever reason. I had another post taken down because there was a bow and arrow in it. It had, the, oh, right. the, it had nothing to do with violence or anything like that. And it was literally just a bow and arrow and it, it got taken down for whatever reason. It, it's weird stuff like that, man. You know, it's just that, that page. It's like, you, you never, you never know what that platform, you know? That's true. That's true. Yeah. And unfortunately, I guess there is a bit of censorship, but I feel like a lot of it, at least in your case, it seems like there's just a misunderstanding more so than like, it's not like necessarily you said, you're saying the wrong thing. It's just, I guess it's just misunderstanding, which yeah. I don't even really understand about you know, the bow and arrow thing. <laughs> yeah. That one was weird. I don't get that. I, I have a few of them on there. Um, that you just, when you look at them and read them, you're just like, why? <laughs> like out of everything, why that one? It's just, it's, yeah. it's, it's strange, man. Um, but you know, and that's why too, uh, uh, I was trying to bring focus on, a, on, a, on Instagram too, like in my description, when I, when I have my quote done is I came up, I thought of this idea cause all, all these pages get banned for whatever reasons that are odd. Um, but if you hashtag yourself, like if you start hashtagging blue rings, right. Uh, oh, right. people can find you through your own hashtag if they follow your hashtag, right. Because it doesn't matter what account you're using. If you're able to still hashtag your blue rings, like so let's say you got banned as blue rings for God knows why, you know, yeah. uh, you create a new account, you start hashtagging blue rings again, people are able to find you and circumvent you, uh, circumvent the, the system and kind of get, get back to your page. And so you can keep your followers that way um and so it, it's just it's something that I, i'm like been trying because like i'm not at risk of being banned anymore uh I, those yeah. marks are gone and it's been a long long time since anybody's gotten crazy on any of my posts but um it's just uh it's just an idea for anybody that does struggle with being censored it's something that you might want to try to see if that helps you maintain your followers kind of a thing but okay. i'll keep that in mind <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned something about like um the ancestry which mm -hmm. i kind of like and uh, how i guess in a way the way you live it's kind of like you are kind of preserving that ancestry right which obviously like everyone probably has like a different type of ancestry of course of but course. i guess in a way like you're still living through them because without them you wouldn't be here correct yeah there, there's a, a great um saying that i heard once um and it's essentially it's you know you are a mosaic of your ancestors right yeah. it's like the parts that make up you the way that you look the way that you move you know all of these little pieces that make you unique today descend from people who have come before you you know and it's like a lot of people like to think that we're just like dropped on this earth we're just these random npcs that just pop up you know and it's like oh we exist and then we stop existing it's like no like we are a culmination of history you know we're yeah. a culmination of culture of history of ideas, of, of blood, of sweat, of sacrifice, you know, of, yeah. of overcoming of adversity because, you know, there's so many people today, like billions of people, and we failed to remember how harsh this world was, you know, even just over a hundred years ago. And this, the risk and danger and sacrifice our ancestors went through and survived, you know, it's like, yeah. We are a success story ourselves. Like that's how we start on this earth is we are a success story because of our ancestors. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of, especially in the West, there's a lot of people who are depressed, right? And they don't find fulfillment. They, they feel lost and they don't have a direction. And they're going all these different avenues from, you know, drugs to crazy cults and to all kinds of, you know, these, these weird things trying to find fulfillment. But it's like, really, you just got to go back to yourself and find, yourself master yourself right yeah. and understand your history your self history your ancestral history you know because your ancestors are your history we read history books all day we love history so much right but we yeah. barely even know our own right most sure. americans can barely know they barely know the names of their great grandparents That's you know yeah. so it is it's uh it's a sad fact um and i i really think that we focus too much outside of ourselves um, and the, the external 
pressures coming against us and less on our own selves, what make us who we are and how to take that and master that and move on from that, you know? Yeah. That's actually very true because I feel like the past, I mean, it helps create your future, which Mm -hmm. obviously, right? Like your ancestry, of course, is important, right? But without knowing that, it's very hard to carry on your lineage and your descendancy because it's like you're just, you know, just procreating just for the sake of it without like a a real purpose behind it, right? And I remember there there was this one quote that you had. It was kind of like, prepare... um, don't prepare the path for your child to prepare your child for the path. Yeah. And I was like, no, that's actually very true. Cause a lot of people, you know, they kind of do spoil their kids in a way where it's like they're pampering them, but you know, not essentially not for the world, but they want the world to be pampered for them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, it, it's good that you bring that, bring that up too. Cause it, you know, I'm, I'm a child of two. I'm a child. I'm a father of two. I've got two kids okay. and it, it is, uh, very difficult to not want to just protect your child from everything right like you love them so much that you don't want anything to hurt them you don't want anything to harm them but by protecting them by putting them in a a bubble you're actually doing them a disservice right because this world is harsh um you know one one of the 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 quotes that i like to to bring up again and again is like this world is not a paradise world of nirvana right? It is a war lit star. Uh, it's a war starlit Valhalla. Okay. We are surrounded by adversity. We are surrounded by people trying to get a leg up against you constantly. Right. And it, it's, it's a fierce world, but it's not fierce in the evil sense, but it's designed and meant for our own betterment. Right. Because if we overcome adversity, we become stronger. And so yeah. this whole world is a world of war so that way you can be tested against it, see what your metal is. And every time you overcome, you become stronger. But then also people get hung up on failure. They, you know, they're like, oh, I failed that. I'm, I'm no good. And it's like, no, 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 no. Failure is also part of the process. You learn where you were weak and you can take that and become stronger, right? And so people that get bogged down by failure, you know, they, they, they give up, right? And, and to me, it's like, that's really a degenerate mindset. If you fail in something, that just means you got to keep going, right? And you don't do the thing that you were doing that you failed in the first place. And it's just, it's just war. You know, it's just you're constantly trying to improve yourself. You're constantly training physically, mentally, spiritually. You know, you're, you're focusing on that. And all, again, all of that is wrapped up package of focusing on yourself and improving yourself. And so as much as we want to protect our kids, we need to find a fine balance of allowing just enough danger to not destroy them because we definitely don't want that, right? But also not so much safety that by the time they become adults, they're shocked by all of this adversity that they're getting pounded with. You know, it's like, there's no such thing as everybody gets a trophy. You got to work for that trophy. You got to fight for that trophy. And so as a parent, it's it's our job, just as like it was our job of our ancestors to protect our children, to teach our children, and pass on our wisdom, you know, wisdom is experience. So pass on our experience to them so they don't have to go through the exact same struggle and sacrifice we did, but that they can take those tools of wisdom and apply them to their own lives. So when they face adversity, they're able to overcome it. If we never talk about our struggle, if we never talk about our sacrifice and the blood we shed for our kids and we avoid helping them through and guiding them through the the difficulty like the difficult trials that they go through in their own lives while they're with us before they move uh we're doing them a huge disservice by not being there for them and allowing them to experience some hardship and adversity um while we can still keep it safe you know um there's there's a jordan peterson quote and I'm, i'm gonna butcher it but he essentially just he talks about that as he's just like you know we gotta allow just enough danger for our kids um but not too much safety. And it, I'm paraphrasing big time, but it, it's, you know, people that watch Jordan Peterson, whether you like the guy or not like the guy, it's like, he's got some great, great quotes and uh, something yeah. along those lines is, was one of them. Oh, that's for sure. I actually like that because you know, what's actually ironic about when you pamper your kids too much is that you don't want them to get hurt, but you are hurting them by, you know, pampering them too much ironically. Precisely. And, 
one of the things like I feel like you know letting them be in a little bit of like I guess like hardship. I feel like martial arts really like embodies that fine enough, which is what I obviously practice. Right. But, you know, but I feel like that will really help, right? Or just any physical activity can really help with that, honestly. Mm -hmm. No, it, exactly. Like sports, sports is is one of those is a great example because it is an environment of safety because there's rules, yeah. regulations, there's coaches, there's referees, there's other players, um, you know, just depending on the sport. And so that's why sports are so valuable and important to our kids because it teaches that, that, that war aspect of life, right? That it teaches us that we are faced with adversity with every play, with every encounter, with every move, but how to overcome it. And every time we fail, like every time you lose a fight, right? You've learned something about yourself. You don't just pick up and you're like, you know what? That's it. I, I'm a terrible fighter. I'm done. I'm going to go, you know, bake cookies or something the rest of my life, right? You lose a fight and you're like, okay, where, what did I mess up? Like, where am I weak? Where do I need to focus? And if you can't figure it out, that's what your coach is for, right? Your coach is going to point that out and be like, hey, like, this is where you're failing. This is, this is where you need to improve. And as parents, we are our kids' coaches, you know? Yeah. Actually, like that, yeah. In a way, yeah, you are, in a way, like, your coach, assuming mm -hmm. that you have enough experience, which yeah, you probably should if you have kids, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if you don't have that experience, go get it. You know, go out yeah, and exactly. have four kids. Go out in life and experience stuff. Go mess up. Go fail because your kids are going to. And you need to have those that experience of failure so you can be there with them while they fail, right? Yeah, like we sure. always want our kids to be better than us. Like that's, that's the idea. Our ancestors wanted us to be better than them. We want our kids to be better than us. And so you need to go out and experience that. Experience failure, experience success. So that way you can provide that for your kids. You know, is it, there's another quote. I can't remember where I heard it from, um, I, I think it was a Greek philosopher, but essentially it says, beware of the opinion of a scarless man. Because a man without scars has not experienced the pain of life. True, yeah. You know, what's actually very interesting that you mentioned, obviously, like, it's important to raise kids, but there's obviously a bigger, like, goal to it historically as well. And I'm sure you've probably heard the concept of, like, the civilization cycle. Mm -hmm. right? So there's, like, in a way, there's like, you know, the, the slow rise and then the climax and the decline and, of course, the fall, right? Mm -hmm. And then, of course, it starts again. Right. Right. And, you know, when you don't raise your kids that well, you know, it's like, you know, you've kind of like decreased, I guess, in a way, the pool around you with like along the other kids, right? And mm -hmm. when you don't fulfill your job as a parent, it's kind of like you've kind of let down that generation a bit. Mm -hmm. Like you've held them back. And when you have hold them back, like in a way you're kind of contributing to the fall of that civilization, whatever civilization it is. Absolutely. Right? So it's like, that's why it's very important because your kids are going to live out in the world. And if they impact negatively in a way, it kind of is your fault. Mm -hmm. right? Obviously you try your best to raise them, but if you aren't even putting in effort, then it's like you did come contribute to it. Exactly. No. And it's like our kids are an aspect of ourselves as well, you know? Um, so you want that part of you that's going to be carrying on longer than you, hopefully. Like that's, that's yeah. what you want. You want your kids to outlive you. Like you want them to leave a good impression on the world because that's your legacy, you know? And it's like, you know, a lot, I'm sure a lot of your viewers and a lot of my followers don't have kids. And so this may sound like it doesn't relate to them, but at the same time too, it's like, but think of that, that friend that you have right? Who's inexperienced, who is too timid to risk, go out and risk themselves or anything like that, right? It's like, you don't have to just translate this over to your kids, but think of those within your immediate tribe. Like who is this someone that you care about that you, you know more because of your experience than they do that you could pour into, right? Like who could you be a guide for? And, but before you do that, again, focus on yourself. That mastery of yourself will enable you to do that. It's that rippling effect, you know? Oh, that's true. I was also going to ask you this question. Um, what, do you, what do you think is, like, the ultimate definition of what it means to be, like, a man? Hmm. That, that's a great question. Um, you know, there's a lot of interpretations for that. And a lot of different cultures may have uh, different meanings for that. 
But to me specifically, uh, it really just comes down to discipline to duty, right? So the ultimate definition for a man to me is someone who has disciplined themselves, you know, physically and mentally and are able to apply and practice that discipline to perform the duty that they have to perform in life. Because duty is almost always never something we want to do, but almost always something we know we have to, right? And a lot of people avoid the duty that they have in life. And a lot of people don't know what that duty is in life. And that that's on you for not knowing, right? It's like, you need to yeah. discover that. And that's another aspect of mastering yourself, another aspect of, of, of figuring that out. But duty is not so easy that anybody can do it and not so easy that you can wake up in the morning and just like brushing your teeth, just go do it. It takes discipline to do that, right? And so every single day is a day for training. And there's a lot of aspects of training. I don't mean just physically, but we got to mentally prepare for that. We got spiritually prepare for that and physically prepare for that. Because we may think our duty is this over here, but then this pops up in life and it is way worse than what we thought it was. Um, and, you know, there's another quote. It's like, always prepare for the worst fight that you could possibly imagine. You know, it's like, it's just, you're, all, you're always training for the worst, but also know the possibility that you may not be able to imagine that worst case scenario, that worst case adversity and what you actually do encounter bigger than that. So you're always constantly trying to improve yourself to be able to commit to your duty when it's demanded of you. And so a man that can do that, commit to the duty of when it's demanded of them, to me that that is the definition of, of masculinity, of, of manhood. I like that, I like that. I was actually gonna relate it back to something I think you said earlier about like how the world is in like a safe place, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, obviously, like every, most religions, I would say, have some concept of like heaven and hell. Mm -hmm. you know, heaven, obviously, being like the place where everything is good, right? And then hell being the place where everything is evil, right? And I feel like the world itself is kind of like the crossroads between heaven and hell because we have good here, but we also have evil. And mm -hmm. it's just like this place that's kind of like amalgamated them both. And it's like you have to kind of prepare yourself for both of those and. You have to decide which one you want to live in, at least on Earth. That way, you can prepare for it and, like, I guess the next life. Right? right. It's the battleground. Like this, yeah. this realm is the battleground. And you know, it, there's you know a lot of, of beliefs of, of the afterlife. Um, but for for the example that you were giving specifically, it's like yes, you have you have that spectrum, that the dichotomy between heaven and hell, and then this world is in between. And so it's that struggle in between that dictates which way you go to. And that kind of brings another subject that I like to talk about a lot is, you know, it's this world, it is a war zone, but it's a war zone between, you know, weakness and strength, yeah. you know, if you were going to break it down. And so weakness is those degenerate virtues, the virtues seeking, you know, comfort, sloth, laziness, gluttony, you know, you can just go through the, you know, the seven deadly sins or whatever. Um, and then on the other side is not just like goodness, right? But discipline, duty, honor. It's, it's those, those other virtues that good people, you know, people can be good, but they have to take it a step further to pursue those noble virtues, right? Yeah. And so this world and your life in this world is a constant pressure from the two. Like we naturally want to gravitate towards, you know, in, in all my pages stuff, I talk about the slave morality, you know, the, yeah. the morality of the masses that, that people, it's easy to do. Everyone's doing it. You know, it, you, you won't be looked down upon if you become this, if you become lazy, if you go and you drink all the time or you eat all the time or whatever you want, you won't be looked down on by the masses, right? If you're a good person, people will respect you and like you, but when you're pursuing the noble virtues, it's difficult because the masses over here hate it. They don't want to see you climb like that. They, they discourage you all of the time because you make them feel bad. And so they're just like, Oh, like, why are you doing that? Like, I could never do that. Why are you doing that? I feel bad because you're working so much harder than I could. You know, it's like, it's, that's a broad brush of these types of encounters, but people who are pursuing noble virtues are hissed at by the masses. 
because these virtues are the virtues of, of divinity, right? They're, they're the hardest virtues to obtain in life. Some of the hardest virtues to define um, because people don't want us to be able to define these anymore, you know? And uh, that's what life is, is the struggle between those two forces, I'd say. Some of the words that I like that you used over there is beauty and noble. You know? mm -hmm. And I feel like, honestly, a lot of people, at least today, I feel like are not fulfilling their duty. Right? Whether that's to be a man or a woman, right? And I feel like when you don't fulfill it, it's kind of like you're kind of holding yourself back. And in a way, it's like you're not living up to your potential. This is why we have a lot of people that are unfortunately depressed, right? Mm -hmm. And even though there is a struggle in fulfilling your duty, right? But if you don't f finish that struggle, then there's a struggle of not fulfilling it, right? And then obviously, like, the thing that I like that you added with the noble part, and I, I've actually, funny enough, said this, like, at least not on the podcast, but I've said this, like, with my friends, at least, is because they mentioned something about, you know, fulfilling your desires, right? Which I feel like is not the best way to go about it. I actually did, funny enough, use that same word, noble, right? So I feel like, because when you fulfill something that's noble, there's more to it than just your mere desires to it. Like, as you said, like, there's a duty to fulfilling it. Right. Yeah. And, it, you know, it, there's there's a fine line between that, too, as well, because it's like, you know, we have desires. Right. But what is the essence of those desires? What What is the purpose of those desires? If is it happiness? Right. Because if people get hung up on that idea that, you know, life is about the pursuit of happiness. Like it's a yeah. it's an American phrase. But people forget that happiness is a feeling. It's yeah. feeling. it goes away. Right. It's 100%. Yeah. And there's a, yeah, there's a lot of things that can give you happiness, make you experience that feeling. But if you're always pursuing happiness, you're like a dog pursuing cars. You're chasing this one car. You're not sure if you're going to get it or not. If you do get it, okay, great, you have it. Now what? Oh, there's another. There's another car, and you're going to go chase that other car. And you're yeah. just going back and forth chasing happiness all the time. But if your desire is about fulfilling what it is that is your duty, then you will find fulfillment in that. And oftentimes that is not easy to obtain and is it will cause hardship. Um, it's not fun to obtain that. A lot of people that pursue happiness, uh, it's fun to get it. You know, it's, it's, you get a little rush when you're getting happiness and it, it's, yeah. you get the endorphins and stuff. Um, but pursuing what is dutiful, uh, per pursuing actual fulfillment is oftentimes a struggle. And you're going to want to stop doing it a lot while you're doing while while you're on that path, you know. That's true. Uh, yeah. That just reminded me of a quote, uh, actually, because I, I'm writing a book too. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. Oh, if, I think I, I saw that yeah. post section. Yeah. Yeah. So I, essentially, what the book is is I'm taking all of my posts and I'm compiling them together to be uh, an in order book to where it's like an idea is this chapter, another idea is this chapter. And it's all of the, my posts regarding those ideas. And I'm trying to make them flow together. It's all written. I'm just trying to edit it out. So hopefully, I was hoping to have it done by Christmas. But um, due, to, due to work, I had to pull back from it. Um, but I'm starting to pour back into it a little bit. And hopefully have it done and published at some point early next year is the goal. But um, anyway, there was, a, there was a quote that as I was editing it today, came across. And it was, it's only he who is master of himself, of himself is successful for only he is fulfilled and only in fulfillment is divinity. So again, it's that mastery of the self, willing to sacrifice the self. And that is how you find true fulfillment, right? And finding that true fulfillment is you're on the path to divinity. You know, you're, you're, you're doing what you were made to do. You're doing why you're here. Not just pursuing, chasing cars, the happiness cars, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's more than that. No, I like that because it's interesting you mentioned happiness because funny enough, I had a friend, right? And he was asking about how do I attain happiness, right? And I said, honestly, that, I feel like that's like the wrong question. I feel like instead of chasing happiness, the better thing, I guess, to attain is contentment because, mm -hmm. you know, happiness is just like any other emotion. It comes and goes just like, as you said, right? You know, there's no way on earth you will always be happy. 
it's just not possible. Because unfortunately, there are going to be some things that you face in life that will, you know, it will give you sadness or anger, whatever it is, right? You know, so for happiness, it's kind of like it comes and goes because, you know, you know, God forbid that like anything bad happens to you, but there's no, like, especially if it's something super extreme, there's no way you're going to be happy through that, right? Right. So it's like contentment will give you that because, you know, even if you're not going to be happy, you'll be like, you know, even though I'm going through this hardship, at least I'm better off than a lot of other people, right? Maybe whether it's even in the country or outside of in the world in general, you know? And I feel like a lot of contentment can come from gratitude. No, I mean, yeah, I, you know, contentment is, uh, it's another thing that, that I've talked about too. And it, it's important to be able to be content. Um, but at the same time too, contentment has a dark side to it. It does have a degenerate uh, path that you can per- fall upon thinking you're doing something noble and good by being content, but it can also cause complacency. And complacency is a, a, just a, it's just a pond, right? When you first find this pond and it's a young pond, it's beautiful. You got animals living in it, sun's hitting it just right. But if there's not rushing water, if there's not a storm coming to move that water around, to refill it, to be constantly pouring into it, that pond will start to fester. It'll start to stink. And it'll start to dry up. And then it turns into a a marsh and then dried out land that's got nothing in it, you know? So even though it's important to be content, contentment has its, its limitations. Um, It's a good state of being, especially after a failure, right? If you fail, you need to be content with the fact that you failed. You need to embrace that. Like being content with the state that you're in, that you failed to achieve that goal you had. So you need to accept where you're at right now is extremely important. Um, so that way you don't get burdened and bogged down by the idea of failure. But if you're not willing to face the storm again and move in that direction and not, not being content with being content, then you could fall down into complacency, which just like that pond will eventually start to fester and stink in your life and you're going to want more. Yeah. No, I like that, the, you know, that distinction, right? Because... Yeah, I guess in a way you are right because contentment can make you mediocre, like mm-hmm. too much of it at least. Right? Exactly, it's a fine balance. You know, there's, life's not about extremes. It's not black and white, yeah. right? It's important to have contentment again, right? But yeah. that should also not be the pursuit. If contentment's the pursuit, you will become complacent, and if you could become complacent, complacent, you'll never achieve anything in life. You'll never feel fulfilled. It's true. Uh, you mentioned balance, and funny enough, it's I'm recalling this quote, and it was actually by this one like MMA coach, and he, his name is Frost Zahabi, but he basically said that, um, you know, a, a good balance isn't 50-50. You will need, like, a bit more of something, right? So you might lean a bit more towards one side just because you need it a bit more. So he said it's kind of like it can be 60-40 or 70-30, depending on what it is, but obviously you want to avoid being too, like, like 90 10 type of balance because hmm. yeah, that's interesting yeah because there's this quote and it's kind of like this other quote that i heard it was the extreme yeah the, the extreme or i believe it was like the opposite of it of an extreme is still an extreme yeah. hmm. mm-hmm. no that, that's that's an interesting point too because you know it's like it's you you do want to be leaning in one way or the other you know, and yeah. kind of going back to our example of, of this life is a state between, you know, hell and he- uh, heaven and hell, right? It's a state between degeneracy and nobility, right? Yeah. It's like we're constantly being faced with those things. Like you, you can't avoid having that shadow of the masses looming over you. Like it's that, that voice is within us. It's, it's the goal is to get it to be a whisper, right? Like to bring down the cry of complacency, of, of luxury and comfort to kill it as much as you can on your pursuit of nobility. And I talk about it too, like the pursuit of the Ubermensch, the pursuit of the, the, the divine principle. Right. And even though that's the pursuit, you're still struggling with this other darker side. And so it's like on the balance, 
you're always wanting to be. Every day is not going to be perfect. Every day is not going to be the same. But you always want to be on that balance to be more so upon the no, the noble side, right? As much as possible. Um, but but again, it's like it's it's a daily balancing act of trying to suppress that constant slave morality that that is especially prevalent in the modern world. You know. Just yeah, so you- no, that's for sure. So, what what do you think is the the ultimate pursuit? What do you say? Just mastery of the self. Mastery of the self. Mastery of the self. You know, it's we can get so caught up in things around us, so caught up in what everybody else is doing, especially with social media. You're just, oh my gosh, like this person's traveling here, and I've always wanted to travel there. Or this person is doing that. This person started their own business. We get so caught up in what other people are doing and what the world is like that we forget that we need to start here. You know, we need to start with our own experiences. We need to start with improving ourselves daily of, of building that temple, right? And when you build a temple, the temple is, is ugly when it's being built. It makes no sense. It's out of balance. Stones are being piled upon stones. There's scaffolding. There's, you know, all kinds of stuff going on. There's debris and rubble everywhere. But when that temple is complete, it's beautiful. In fact, it's inspiring. It's awe-inspiring. And so that is, is just to use an analogy, what we want for our lives. We want to be building our temple. We want to be building ourselves, not just because we want beauty, right? To surround ourselves with beauty, to become something glorious, to become something that this world could remember, but that those that are passerby are inspired to do that themselves. I like that. So before we end off, do you have any, uh, do you feel like you have anything to say or any closing thoughts? You know, we're, we're in a war. We're in a war with our world. We're in a world with our, uh, a war with ourselves. Um, but it is a long war, right? It's ideally because it's the war of life. And so constantly be focusing on what it is today that you can master and don't worry about what you need to master tomorrow. Always focus on today. There's a, a quote from, from the Havamal, which is a, a, a old Nordic text. Um, and uh, essentially what it says is only a fool worries about the problems of tomorrow. Because no matter what, if he, ha- if he worries about them tomorrow, he's going to have a sleepless night tonight. And the problems of tomorrow will still be there. So sleep well tonight, right? Focus on what you can do now. Focus on how you can become stronger and improve yourself now. And then you will have the tools you need to be able to take on the battle of tomorrow. I like that. I like that. Focus. It's basically focus on the now. Yes. I like that. You know, it was honestly a real honor to have you on here. Yeah, it was a pleasure being on here. Thank you. Yeah. For having me. No, I, I'd honestly love to have you on here again, like sometime in the future for sure. I would love that. Love to be on. You hit me up and I'll be there. For sure. For sure. So for everyone to enjoy this content, please like and subscribe. You know, hit that bell notification so that we can keep this content coming. And you know, until next time, peace. Absolutely. Thank you.